Uh, okay, so we really want you to understand uh, how to use genome browsers and, and specifically to become sort of experts at doing uh, variant inspection, in particular single nucleotide and structural variants. Um, and then hopefully if there's time, we want to kind of take a step further and show you some of the sort of next generation tools that people are using uh, to do variant analysis. Okay, so this is the organization of the modules that I'm going to be doing with you guys. So the, the first 20 minutes I'm going to tell you about uh, visualization tools and genome browsers and hope for the better part of this hour for you guys to actually uh, get your hands dirty using um, genome browsers. Uh, so you're going to look at uh, visualizing single nucleotide polymorphisms, structural variants, uh, and then again uh, part three tomorrow if there's time to do interactive variant analysis. Okay, so part one, visualization tools. Uh, I always like to start off with the, the history of genome visualization, just to give some context of where we are. Uh, so this, this is a, an image taken from the 1800s. Any, any guesses at what this is? Sorry, phyl phylogenetic tree? The scientist behind this? No, sorry. Darwin. Who is the scientist behind this and what does this represent? Darwin. Darwin, okay, right. So this is a phylogenetic tree. In, in Darwin's scrapbook, 1900s. X-ray crystallographic structure, who are the people behind this? Rosalind Yes. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Okay, so uh, really now we're in the, the era where we can actually look at base pairs. So we've gone from population level to a high level structure to now looking at single bases. And you guys are the next generation of kind of data visualization experts and, and Nobel Prize winners in that, in that area. So. Uh, why, why is it important to visualize data? Why, why do we do this and not just leave this up to computers? Uh, so the, the textbook uh, example of this in, in visualization field is um, this Anscombe's Quartet. So this is a, a set of four different data sets. Um, they're listed on the left here. They're XY coordinates. And each of these data sets has the exact same mean and the exact same variant. And so if you have a, a statistical program that ran through this that just did these basic statistics, uh, you would say that these are the same. But obviously when you plot them, you know, the, the kinds of patterns that uh, emerge from them are, are uh, very clear to you by eye. So I want to I take this uh, just one step further and teach you a little bit about uh, your pre-attentive processing skills. Okay, so there was a fraction of a second there where it showed a bunch of data points. And so can you guys identify what the outlier was? Red dot. Okay, so you know, you've know you identified it was red, you've identified that it was a dot, and you could probably point to the position on the screen just a fraction of a second. So the bioinformaticians in the audience can probably tell you that, that to be able to program that recognition might take how long? A couple days, at least. Um, so the point being that uh, why, that, coming back to this question of why do we visualize data, uh, you, your human visualization system is really a low cost and high performance sense maker that enables you to uh, find patterns in data and certainly in, in the case of bioinformatics to be able to debug and identify issues with your data. I know we've done this a, a number of different times and that's uh, essentially what you guys are going to be looking at uh, over the next couple of days is being able to understand whether or not the, the computational tools you're using are actually um, making valid predictions. Okay, so now uh, we're going to talk about some visualization tools in genomics. Uh, there are a large number of, of genome browsers available. I count 40. There's probably upwards of 50 um, now. Uh, so which do we use? And that really depends on what task you have at hand, uh, the kind and size of the data, and whether or not you care uh, about the privacy of the data that you're looking at. So the, the key genome browsers that, that we're going to be looking at are uh, the IGV, Integrative Genome Browser, or Viewer, and that's out of the Broad Institute. And for full disclosure, uh, I'm the lead developer on the Savant Genome Browser, but we're also going to be using that as well. Uh, so these genome browsers are really great at looking at high throughput sequencing reads and especially good for looking at um, genetic variants. Um, they're great for looking at even very large alignment files. So I think Michael is going to be talking about uh, BAM files. Um, so those are read alignments. Uh, and th those can be stored locally or remotely. So uh, if you're concerned about data privacy, um, these, are, these are great tools to use. 
Uh, you might also want to try these other tools. So these are web-based tools, but um, web technologies have come a long way, and they're being sort of retrofitted to be able to handle very large data sets in, in private ones. Uh, so UCSC Genome Browser and Traxter, I think you guys may experience uh, uh, work with uh, uh, probably tomorrow. So IGB is a desktop genome browser. It's designed, again, for high-throughput sequencing data. And to be honest, I think it's probably the most fully featured genome browser available. And so um, if you're looking for the default tool to use, I would start with IGB. Um, Savant, again, is a tool that we've been developing here at U of T. Sorry that this is kind of flaky. Uh, it's also a desktop genome browser. Uh, but we put a lot of emphasis on uh, helping researchers manually inspect single nucleotide and structural variants. And so uh, we spent a lot of time thinking about pre-attensive processing and being able to um, depict uh, variants in a way that you could very easily recognize what, what's uh, a variant. So what's depicted on the left is a, a SNP, and what's shown on the right is a, is a structural variant. And you guys are, are going to become experts in kind of disentangling this information. Uh, genome browsers are not the only way to look at genomic data. There are uh, a number of different tools uh, available. You might have seen uh, Circos. So this is a, a circular representation um, where um, it's great for looking at long distance relationships. So uh, around the axis of the circle, uh, you could have chromosomes and the connections between them, if you'd like. Um, this hive plot is a newer representation that actually is coming out of the same lab that Circos did. Um, it's just different ways to visualize genomic data. And it, again, it comes back to what exactly you'd like to represent. Sorry that it's... A little bit flaky. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to talk about how we visualize single nucleotide variants. Um, this is just a reference for you um, for the different kinds of, of variants that we might find in the genome. So we have single nucleotide polymorphisms, uh, insertions and deletions that might be small or large, uh, and copy number variants. And so uh, you can use this as a reference as, as we go through them. So uh, you guys are going to be covering the techniques uh, in a lot more detail. Um, but this is essentially how single nucleotide variants uh, are identified. So you have reads that come from high throughput sequencing technologies, and they're aligned through some computational technique to a reference genome. Um, and then you basically assess for each position whether or not there's support for an alternative base or not. Uh, and you can, you can encode that in, a, in an algorithm, but you can also look at the data and, and make that decision for yourself. There are a number of different metrics that are important when, eva when evaluating the validity of a, a single nucleotide variance. It includes coverage, so how many reads were aligned to that particular position on the reference genome, how much support is there for the alternate allele versus uh, the reference base, uh, whether or not there are, are artifacts, so PCR artifacts and strand bias are important, uh, and then various quality metrics. And again, you guys are going to learn uh, about these particular metrics. Um, a little bit later, but these are important to know. And given a good genome browser, you're able to inspect these things and, and make these judgment calls for yourselves. Okay, yeah. Sorry if you're going cross-eyed with that. Uh, okay, so with with that, uh, the next slide is just talking about uh, lab. So we're going to start with uh, looking at IGV. If you're already familiar with IGV, there is kind of a complementary lab on Savant. You're essentially doing the same sort of workflows. Um, within the lab, you'll find online, at least electronically, uh, I've listed different mirrors to different data sets. Uh, so the mirror number, it just corresponds to the row number. So there's, you know, mirror one, two, and three. Uh, there's a, for the people in the fourth row, just you know, use mirror one. That's fine. Um, and just for, uh, for tomorrow, I'd just like to kind of... Yeah, the screen's a little... For, for